Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. In this video, we're going to look into IGCSA Physics Chapter 19, Electrical Circuits, in which we'll study the different components of an electrical circuit. Some of them will go in detail, some of them we will not, but it's good to recognize their symbols. So I'm just going to slide through it. Um, and in this first section of the video, we're going to look into these five components in details. So first one, is resistors and resistor there are many types of resistors variable resistor ldr light dependent resistor and also thermistor so let's look into the first one variable resistor it a resistor in which its resistance can be changed for example by turning a knob or moving a slider so here i have a diagram on how a variable resistor look like and this is its symbol and how it works is that the slider will control the length of wire in which current will flow in. So just look at these two diagrams here, the first one, second one. The first one is that imagine using a slider, you move from all the way from the left to the right hand side. It basically determines the location of the pointer here, determines how much current is flowing in the circuit, the length of wire. Remember what we learned in last chapter is that the longer the wire, the higher the resistance. So by changing the contact point of the slider, we can change the resistance of a circuit. Similarly, in this example, it's the same thing. So it uses a slider to control the point of contact. The amount of track that a current flow depends on the position of contact. So therefore, by using this method, we can control the amount of resistance we want in our circuit. So the other resistor is the like-dependent resistor. It's a resistor that's dependent on like. So it, an LDR is made of material that does not conduct well. So if you shine light on an LDR, and its resistance will decrease. Whereas in, a dark, in the dark mode, an LDR will have high resistance. And the reason because of this is that like, when you shine light on an LDR, the light will con contains photons that makes the electron energize and flow quicker and this result in more current flowing hence we say that in a bright environment the L resistance of the LDR will decrease so that's LDR and we also have thermistor another type of resistor in which the resistance depends on the environment so for a negative temperature coefficient thermistor very complicated mean but what it means is that the higher the temperature, the lower the resistance of this um, resistor will be. So it's a resistor in which the resistance dependent on the temperature. So that's all about temperature uh, resistors. Now we look into another component called a relay. It is basically a switch controlled by electromagnetic. And when a relay is used, there are usually two complete circuits, one, second, two, two. So how it works is that when current flows through in the first circuit, the magnetizing coil in the first circuit becomes magnetized. And when it becomes magnetized, it can now act, treat, act as a magnet. So the coil will then pull the switch here in the second circuit, causing it to close. This allows a current to flow in the second circuit to turn on the motor here. But at this point, you might ask, why is this even needed? Why don't we just use our hand and close the switch? And when a relay is needed, it's usually because the second circuit often involves a large voltage. And you don't want to use a hand or some manual work to turn it on because that would be very dangerous. And that's when relay comes into um, use, which um, we use, we open the switch here, we magnetize this magnetizing coil, and then by relying on this magnet, we open the switch in the second circuit, which is a lot more dangerous if we were to open it ourselves. So that's a relay. And using LDR and relay, so in this example here is that uh, you can use a combination of components to make this um, circuit work. So in this case, the resistance of LDR is lower during the day. So when resistance incre decreases, current increases, and the heater will then be turned on. So this is basically a scenario which you want to turn on the heater only when uh, you are in a bright environment. So that's how you can automate certain stuff. So 
Um, have we looked at resistor and relays? Now we look at diode. It is a component that allows electric current to flow in one direction only. And this is the symbol for diode. And to break this symbol down, the arrow here basically shows us um, in which direction can the current flow in this circuit. And the bar shows that if the current is trying to flow in the opposite direction, um, then the diode will block the current flows. So let's say, let's look into one more example to help you understand how to use the diode. Imagine one a circuit that has, in the first circuit, I want the lamp to light up, the other circuit, I don't want it to light up. So I have two diagrams here. You can see that in the circuit on the left, current flow from positive terminal to the negative terminal. So um, if my diode is placed in this direction, current will be able to flow because um, that's the direction which um, current can flow. So if I put the diode like that, the lamp will light up. But if I were to put it the other way around, because current flow from left to right, it doesn't follow the direction of the diode. Therefore, current will not reach this light bulb, hence this lamp will not light up. So um, a special type of diode called the light emitting diode is a type of diode that emit light when the current flow through it. Um, some application is maybe the indicator light to show whether stereo or TV is on, modern traffic light, and the benefits of them is that they require very little maintenance because they don't get spoiled very easily. So that's the first section of the chapter. Now we look into what happens when we put resistors together. And resistor can be arranged in series and also in parallel. But arranging in two different ways will result in two different outputs. So let's look into the difference. So first of all, resistor in series. In series, the combined resistance is equal to the sum of resistances. So if you put a 1.5 ohm, two 1.5 ohm resistors in a circuit, your circuit will have three ohm in terms of res resistance. And therefore, the current is also the same at all point. The bigger the resistance, the bigger the potential difference across it, meaning uh, the bigger the voltage across these resistors. Whereas um, in voltage, right? For voltage, the sum of potential difference across each resistor is equal to the cell voltage. So imagine um, my circuit has the 30 volt electromotive force provided by the source. Um, therefore, in my res these voltages will be shared by two resistors here. And because the resistance is, they are equal, so the voltages are also equal. So let's look into what happens when you connect resistors in parallel. So lights in conventional housing in your house, they're connected in parallel with each other. This is because each one, each light requires full voltage of the main supply to work. So if your battery is by voltage, and if you connect it, um, multiple electrical appliances here, they will also get the full five voltage. So unlike um, in series where voltages are shared, in parallel, voltages are the same across all components. So uh, one interesting thing about it is that the resistance of the circuit will decrease when you arrange the resistance in parallel. And the formula to calculate the resistance is we use our, this formula. And in this example here, let's say they ask you what is the effective resistance, meaning the total resistance of this circuit. I can just use this formula, 1 over R equal to R1, the first resistors, the resistance of the first resistor, 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5. Since what I care about is R, I'm going to do combine the two fraction together. So I'm going to get 2 over 5. And then using some linear equation, I got 2R equal to 5. Therefore, my R is equal to 5 over 2 ohm, which is also equal to 2.5 ohm. So you can see that when I put two resistance resistor together and arrange them in parallel, the effective resistance is way less than the individual resistance of their resistor. So um, that's the answer. So um, the current from the source is greater than the current through each resistance. So unlike in series, in series, the current is the same at all point. But then um, in this example here, because we are arranging resistance in parallel, therefore current will be different. So just trade of it like two amperes over here. And then when it travels, it reaches a junction and then the two ampere will split out. And therefore we have one ampere here, the other ampere here. 
So let's solve some of the questions to help you understand better. Three 5 ohm resistors are connected in series. So I'm just going to draw it out in series, three 5 ohms, with a 12 volt power supply. Calculate the total combined resistance of the three resistor. So first of all, we know that three resistance here is 5 ohm, and therefore my combined resistance will be equal to 15 ohm because you can just sum them all up. Whereas the second question that they ask is, what is the current that flows in the circuit? All right, so I know that in this question, since I already got the resistance and the voltage, I can use the formula V equal to IR. V is 12, resistance is 15. So my I is equal to 12 over 15, which is equal to 0 0.8 ampere. Okay, so that's my second question. And to answer the third question, what is the PD across each resistor? PD means voltage. So again, I can use the same formula, V equal to IR. I know that my cur current is equal to 0 0.8, my resistance is equal to 5, so it will be 4 voltage. So there's 4 voltage across each resistor. So if I look into my answer here, the combined resistance is 15 ohm, the current is 0 0.8, and the PD is 4 volt. So that's how you solve a question like that using multiple formulas. So the third part of this video will talk about potential divider. It is a part of the circuit consisting of two resistors, okay, connecting its series to obtain a smaller voltage than supplied. Meaning, even if the voltage in the source is a lot bigger, we can use a potential divider to sort of divide the potential difference. And I'm going to show you how. So before that, you need to know that um, the PD across resistor is the same across is the same ratio as their resistance. Just remember this formula, we'll use it in our following slides. So let's look into this potential um, divider. Imagine that the source has an EMF of 4 volt, and then we have a potential divider. We have two resistors, 2 ohm each. They're asking us to find what is the voltage across each resistor. So in order to do this, I can first um, find out uh, because R1 and R2 are the same. Therefore, this put, um, voltages here will be split into this R1 and R2. Therefore, I can say that each resistor here is going to have two ohm. Uh, it's going to have two volt voltage here because they are split. And this is just a very simple example. I'm going to show you another example in which the resistance of each resistor is already different. So how we can solve this is first to find out what is the current, all right? So we know that we can find the current using V equal to IR, and my V is five, and then I is what I want to find, and the combined resistance of this R1 and R2 will be equal to four plus six, which is equal to 10 ohm. So in other words, we can say that my ampere is equal to 0 0.5. And if I want to find out what is V1 and V2, again, I can use the same formula, V equal to IR, 0 0.5 multiplied by 4, I got 2 ohm, i uh, sorry, 2 um, volt. And then V2, again, the same formula, 0 0.5 multiplied by 6, I'll have 3 volt. So that's how um, I calculate the answers of this. V1 and V2 will be 2 volts and 3 volts. So that's about it. Um, let's look into another question which is uh, quite hard. A potential divider circuit is required to produce an output voltage of 8 volt across resistor R. So that means for resistor 1, they have 8 volts. And for the supply voltage is 12. What is the required share value of the series resistor? So because we know that this is a potential divider, if V1 is equal to 8 volt, it means that V2, it will be equal to 12 minus 8, which is 4 volt. Okay, so by knowing, by getting this fact out, we can then use the formulas that we used in the beginning, which is V1 over V2 equal to R1 over R2, which will be equal to 8 divided by 4 equal to 600 divided by the unknown that we want to find. So if I were to, let me use another color to make it clearer. So if I were to do the linear equation, I'll get 8x equal to 600 times 400, 
that this x will be equal to 300 ohm. So by using this formula, I can find out what is the res what should the resistance value for R2 be, which is 200, 300. So that's my answers here. And let's try to solve more questions to fully understand this topic. Now, our question is that I need to find out what is V2 and also V int, which is the voltage input. So in this question, again, I can apply the same formulas, which is V1 over V2 equal to R1 over R2. I got 7.2 divided by the unknown. R1 is 216 divided by 72. So if I were to do the linear equation, I'm going to use my calculator, 7.2 times 72, I will have 500 and this. So I will divide it by 216, which I'll get 2.4. So from what I get here, I know that V2 is equal to 2.4 volt. So by having V1 and V2, actually we already have the V in. So because V in can be calculated by using the sum of V1 plus V2. So I'm going to get 7.2 plus 2.4 be equal to 9.6 volt. So that's the answer for this question, 9.6. So let's look into the fourth part of this chapter, current and resistance in the parallel circuit. So in the previous section, we learned that current will be different at different part of the circuit if the resistor is arranged in parallel. All right. And the current in will be equal to current out, meaning this amount, let's say the current of this circuit is 2 ampere. Once it reaches a junction, it will be split into the equivalence of, so in this case, 1 ampere, 1 ampere. If you sum it out, we get 2 ampere. So, and the resistance of it, you can use the formula here, as already explained in the video. And now, knowing this effect, we can then solve this question. First of all, we need to calculate what is the effective resistance of these two resistor, 10 ohm and 30 ohm. So I'm going to do 1 over R equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So I'll get 1 over 10 plus 1 over 30, in which you would or to sum them up, you got 4 over 30 equal to 1 over R. So if you do the linear equation, this should be the answer you get, R equal to 7.5 ohm. So that's the effective resistance of my circuit. So the second question asks for the current through each resistor, meaning what is the current flow through each resistor? Um, the second question, I think I will do use the formula V equal to IR. So in the 10 ohm resistance resistor, use the formula V equal to IR, um, V is 12 and resistance is 10. So my I is equal to 1.2 ampere. And as for the 30 ohm resistors, Again, the same formula. I'll use 12 equal to I times 30. So my I is equal to 12 divided by 30, which will give me 0 0.4 ampere. So um, that's question number two. Question number three, the current flowing from the power supply. We know that current flowing from the power supply will be equal to the current flowing through each resistor, the sum of them. So to calculate question number three, I simply use 1.2 ampere plus 0 0.4 ampere, which will give me 1.6 ampere. So that's my answer for three questions. First one, second one, and third one. And if we were to check it, yeah, um, that's the answer, final answer. So let's look into um, the solution. First of all, we got 7.5 ohm for the first question. And then what we can just calculate it is the same thing. So let's look into the last part of the chapter, which requires less calculation, but it's more about safety. So electricity is hazardous, meaning it could cause death if we are not, um, you, we don't use it properly. Therefore, several inventions have been done to minimize the risk of using electricity. So first thing is electric cable. Um, electric cable has different types of wire inside to make sure that everything is safe and then um, they are also isolated in this case. So that's, uh, it's very important to design this cable well so that uh, you don't conduct the electricity yourself. 
Okay, um, when using electricity, it's useful to avoid damp or wet condition because water is an electrical conductor. So if you touch it using your wet hand, you might um, get the current to flow into your body, which will be dangerous. So safety design two is the fuse. So sometimes current can overflow in an appliance. So what the fuse does is that it is designed to melt and break if the current gets above a certain conditions. And when the fuse melts, the circuit will then be broken, preventing cables from burning out. And one way of um, selecting the fuse for your appliance is to always select th the current reading of the fuse should be just above the value of the current when the appliance is operating normally. So for instance, in this example here, let's say your appliance, um, the current flowing through the appliance you use is 8.7 ampere. You always want to select a fuse that is one level above it. So in this case, if you have three choices, you will pick the 13. Because if you were to pick 30, then it might not detect that there's an overflow of current. So safety design tree is a trip switch. It can be used to replace a fuse. So some houses, they have it. It basically breaks the circuit when the current is too big. All right, so that's why it's called trip switch. So number four, multi-plug adapter. They are usually, this, this is called multi-plug adapter. I believe all of you have seen this. They, they are fitted with a fuse to match the wall socket, meaning um, if the current goes to um, overflows, it will melt and then stop the circuit from flowing. The other one is called block adapters, which allow you to plug in multiple devices. They are less likely to contain a fuse, but um, from what I see in my house, they have it. Is that, um, so it's good to be careful when using block adapter to check whether they have a fuse inside or not. And safety design five is to use an earth wire inside a circuit. So in a main circuit consists of live wire, which carries electrical current from the wall socket to the electrical plants. The other way, neutral carries the electric current back to the wall socket. Whereas the earth wire is what um, causes uh, the safety, like make it safe. So what could go wrong? So a fault could happen and the live wire could touch the metal case and the case will now be at main voltages, meaning if you touch it, you're gonna be receiving a fatal shock. So how the earth wire ensures safety is that it is connected to the earth pin, which takes the current from the appliance into the wiring of your house and down to the earth through an earth housing system. So look at my laser pen here, it looks like that. And it basically carries the current down so that when you touch your appliance, you don't get an electrical electric shock. And it can do this because earth wire provide a low resistance path toward the ground. And because the resistance is low, the voltage is high, a high current will pass through the fuse, which will almost melt. So like, um, this is a fuse here, which will melt and stop the circuit from slowing. And that's how earth wire ensures safety. So the last design, safety design is to use double insulation. Um, they don't need an earth wire. Basically, um, you insulate the wire two times to make sure that there's no way you can touch the electricity. Okay, so let's look into some puzzle question before we end this chapter. A homeowner buy a security like, and that switches on when it gets stuck. So what happened to the resistance and the PD across LDR? So we know that when it gets darker, the LDR, the resistance of the LDR will increase because there's no photons they don't like that makes the electrons energized. So resistance will increase. And resistant, when resistance increase, voltage will also increase. Remember the formula in the um, potential divider. So when the resistance increases, voltage will also increase. So in this case, my answer should be C. Oh, sorry. It should be A, increase and increase. A, okay, great. Second question, the total resistance of this combination will be the sum greater between and less than. And in the previous chapter, I mean, in the previous section, we have learned that without calculating it, we know that the effective resistance will be less than any of this resistor. So my answer is D. Next question, what is this circuit symbol? We know that this is a magnetizing coil, it opened a switch, therefore it is called a relay. 
Next question. Um, two resistors are connected in parallel. The current flow through the top resistor is 2 ampere. What is the reading of this ammeter here? So again, um, in order to do this, I need to use the V equal to IR formulas. So V equal to IR help us to identify what is the voltage of the circuit. So I'll just do for the first one. 2 multiplied by 10, I'll get 20 volt. So knowing that V is equal to 20, I can solve, I can find out the ammeter. I mean, I can find out the current here. So 20 equal to I times 5 my I will be equal to 4 ampere. So I know that here should be 4 ampere. And because the ammeter will record the total current of the circuit, so ammeter should show 2 plus 4 ampere. So my answer should be A for apple. So that's the answer. And that's also the last question of our video here. And I hope that you learned a lot from it. Let me know if you have any question in the comment section. I will try my best to help you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.